electromagnetism. So electricity and magnetism are uh, closely uh, linked. Uh, we've already saw that using electric current we can produce an electromagnet. Uh, another example of the connection is that if we have an electric charge, say an electron, that is moving near a magnet, uh, there's a force that uh, acts on that moving charge and that will deflect the path of action. Uh, here's an example of this. I'm going to produce an ele electron beam in this Crookes tube. So you see that um, electron beam. And now I'm going to take this magnet, the big horseshoe magnet, and you see how the the beam gets uh, deflected in all different uh, directions by the magnet. There's a similar effect you can do if you have an old uh, TV. Uh, these old TVs use uh, electron beams to uh, light up the screen, and if you bring a big magnet near the screen, uh, now this can uh, damage the picture of the screen permanently, so uh, don't do this if you are still using that television set, but uh, you see how distorted and warped the image becomes, and this is because the electron beams in the cathode ray tube are being bent uh, and deflected by the uh, magnet. Now, the moving charges don't have to be uh, moving in uh, vacuum or in space. Uh, the electric charges that are moving in a current that's passing through a wire uh, also feel that force. So we'll see this. I'm going to uh, turn on. You see, when I turned on the uh, current, the wire jumps out. See that again? So that Lorentz force acted on the electrons uh, moving on the wire, uh, sorry, in the wire, and uh, the magnetic field uh, produced that Lorentz force on those moving charges and actually pushed the uh, wire away. Now, another connection between uh, electricity and magnetism is electromagnetic induction. So uh, I can use this uh, Lorentz force on charges, and if I have a magnet that's moving towards a coil, that will actually move the charges in the coil and will get a current. So uh, if I'm, in this case, when I'm moving the uh, large horseshoe magnet towards this, this coil, the charges uh, move in one direction, I have a current in one direction. When I move the magnet away, the charges move in another direction. If I don't move the magnet, if I just hold the magnet still, then uh, the current stops. Let's uh, see how this works. So you see the magnet sitting there. Now when I start moving it, you see that the um, meter is indicating the current. And the faster I move the magnet, the more current I can produce. Now, when I just stop, uh, if I just place the magnet nearby, uh, the current uh, doesn't, uh, isn't produced, but as soon as I start moving the magnet, I'm getting a nice big current. Now, instead of um, physically moving a magnet back and forth, I can use an alternating current electromagnet now, when I have an electromagnet with alternating current, when the current is moving one way, the north pole is on one side, and then when the current moves the other way, the south pole is on that side. So, uh, basically, I can create an oscillating magnetic field using an electromagnet that's driven by alternating current. Now, uh, that alternating os oscillating magnetic field will produce a current in objects. So if I put a metal ring near this AC magnet, uh, I'll notice that it starts getting hot by ohmic heating, which tells me that there's a current in that metal ring. 
Now, I can also measure that current just by having, say, a coil of wire with a bulb. So um, here I have this uh, coil of wire with a bulb uh, connecting the ends. And I just turned on the AC electromagnet. You see that when I put the coil near the magnet, it induces a current in that coil. Okay, so that coil is just a big loop of wire with the two ends connected to the light bulb. And this AC electromagnet uh, is inducing a current in that coil. Now, a more uh, dramatic example of creating a current using a fluctuating magnetic field is the so-called EMP, or electromagnetic pulse. So uh, if you have, say, a nuclear bomb, uh, and that's in the atmosphere, there's kind of a complicated process, but this can produce an intense, uh, rapidly fluctuating uh, magnetic pulse, and the current that's induced by this EM pulse can be so large that it can actually knock out uh, circuits, possibly by uh, ohmic heating if the current is uh, really a large amperage. And uh, this happened in 1962 during a nuclear test. Uh, even though the explosion was 900 miles away from Hawaii, it actually knocked out uh, 300 streetlights and uh, TV, uh, sorry, telephone service. Now this EMP is a very popular uh, plot device, and here you see just a handful of uh, films uh, that use it. Uh, there's many more. Now, one thing that happens is when this uh, oscillating magnetic field induces a current in, say, a coil, uh, that current, we know that whenever we have a current moving in a coil, uh, that produces an electromagnet. So this uh, oscillating magnetic field creates a current. That current uh, produces an electromagnet. And uh, this effect is called self-induction. Now, that uh, secondary magnetic field that's uh, due to the induced current, it is always in the opposite direction from the um, primary uh, magnetic field that produces it. So if I have, um, say, uh, an AC magnet with a, a ring that I put near the top of the magnet, uh, that secondary magnetic field will always be uh, opposing or in the opposite direction from the magnetic field created by the AC electromagnet. I know that's kind of complicated, but uh, let's look at a little demonstration of this, because it's kind of an interesting effect. Um, I put that ring uh, of metal, and now I turn on the magnet, and you see that uh, there is now a repulsion between the AC electromagnet and this ordinary ring of metal. Okay? So as I said, the ring of metal, uh, there's a current that goes through it. If you touch that uh, ring, you'll see that it actually got hot, and that current uh, produces the secondary magnetic field that causes the levitation. Uh, one way to sort of realize that there's a current and that's necessary is that if I take a similar ring, but with a slice taken out of it, so it has a cut, okay, so there's a, a second ring, but it has a cut, I turn on the AC electromagnet and nothing happens because uh, I can't get a current flowing around it because there's a gap in the ring. Okay. Notice this AC electromagnet because the magnetic field is fluctuating. It's uh, not as powerful as a standard electromagnet. Another effect that occurs is if I uh, drop a strong magnet in a copper pipe, uh, that secondary magnetic field, uh, well, it's in the 
case of the ring, it was levitating. Uh, this doesn't levitate the magnet, but it does cause it to fall extremely slowly. It can't stop it because it, once it stops it, we s no longer induce a current and we no longer have that uh, secondary field. So watch when we okay, drop it, this magnet. Right. So, here it goes. And notice how slowly it's falling. It finally reaches the, the bottom. Now copper is not ferromagnetic. But it's, you have it tilted, that's the only problem. And, uh, well, okay, here. let me get out of here. here okay. Okay, you tell us if we're holding it straight. Yeah. Is that good? Mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. So watch how it falls. So it's not sticking to the sides, because copper is not ferromagnetic, but that induced current uh, creates that force that makes it fall very slowly. Now, finally, uh, the most interesting connection between uh, electricity and magnetism is that when we have oscillating electric and magnetic fields, uh, this actually propagates as a wave. These are called electromagnetic waves. And examples of electromagnetic waves are radio waves, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, and most important to us, uh, visible light. So these are transverse waves created by oscillating electric and magnetic fields. So in uh, summary, uh, moving electrical charges experience a force from a magnetic field called the Lorentz force. A changing magnetic field induces a voltage which creates a current in a circuit and an extreme example of that is the EMP. An induced current produces its own secondary magnetic field. This is uh, self-induction. The magnetic field resulting from an induced current is always opposite from the magnetic field that induced it. That's uh, Lenz's law. So we saw that in the magnetic levitation and in the uh, magnetic braking, which was the uh, magnet falling very slowly down a, a metal pipe. And then finally, oscillating electric and magnetic fields produce electromagnetic waves. Uh, an important example of that is uh, visible light. So that um, is a summary of the connections between electricity and magnetism, finishing with, uh, appropriately enough, light.